But police say so-called blessing looms making the rounds on social media aren't all they're cracked up to be. Much like that secret sister scam that shows up around the holidays to scam people, it takes advantage of people looking for financial security. More scams are also popping up. Now, if you look in your feed, you see the scams maybe asking for some money and promising much more in return. But as 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens reports, it's illegal. With this particular scam called the Blessing Loom, it is a pyramid scheme, and pyramid schemes are illegal all the time. Blessing Looms are helping people. Y'all put a negative connotation on something that could get someone out of a rut. But HPD's Financial Crimes Unit says the looms are illegal, and in the end, they all collapse. Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the unapologetic Negropian. In today's video, the clip that you just watched, I took from a video that I made about a year ago. It was about an African-American woman who had risen through the ranks in the world of law. She became one of the top lawyers in the whole of the United States and she chose to throw this entire career away because of being implicated in a blessing gloom scandal. You might have remembered the video. I was actually interviewed by her because she was the CEO of the Ancoma repatriation program. This video really perplexed me. I was really torn because here you had a woman who had really fought all of her life for this incredible career only to destroy it because of the American dollar. Greed, all that was the main reason. That was the only thing that I could think of. Why else would you do it? You wouldn't do it just out of spite for yourself, would you? The American dollar is indeed powerful because it does something to you. It does something to people. It changes people. It makes them do things that they wouldn't have otherwise have done if they hadn't have had that type of money. They also ask the question, how do these people do it? How are they able to come up every single year with a different type of pyramid scheme and sell it to the exact same people? And these people fall for it and they end up pouring more and more money into these blessing gloom schemes and end up losing it again. And we end up seeing the exact same stories on TV. The Blessing Loom scandal that we are going to talk about today was one of the biggest ones ever conceived and it was done by a young African-American couple, an affluent African-American couple, a beautiful, famous African-American couple, a couple that seemingly had everything going for them in their lives. That couple was Lashanda and Marlon Moore. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how they did it, why they did it, the impact on their victims and we're going to try and answer the question why do people continue to fall for such schemes before i get into it i'm going to ask you to please like subscribe share click the bell notification and please consider supporting the channel on our patreon link in the description i'm also going to ask you to please follow the oversight youtube channel the youtube channel that is specifically there to help you to invest on the african continent both safely and securely link also in the description so first of all, who is Lashonda and Marlon Moore? Lashonda and Marlon Moore both came to light when they were featured on the OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network, a show called Family or Fiance. And that, of course, gave them national coverage. People knew who they were and people liked them. So the Oprah Winfrey Network is already known for doing wholesome family viewing, things like Dr. Phil, tackling social issues and so when we see people on this network we automatically link it towards good wholesome people this is the way lashanda and marlon both portrayed themselves as being and in every sense of the word they seem to be that way lashanda is an incredibly attractive young lady marlon was a well-known dj anyway so these people had it good they had it all going for them long before they went on this television show they are from texas they are well known in texas and they live a good life they live a good family life so you can probably hear already that we're going down the same route we have people who had it good these people 
were in the top 1% of this world, but were definitely within the top 5% in the United States of earners. These people weren't struggling to pay the rent. So LaShonda and Marlon set up the BINT scheme. The word BINT, B-I-N-T, meaning blessings in no time. As soon as I hear that word blessings, for me, this just sets off alarm bells. <laughs> I, I shouldn't really laugh about this because this really isn't funny, but I don't understand why people wouldn't have seen that as a big red flag. Bint was also set up by another person, Nehemiah Thompson. Now we're going to get back to him a little later because he is just as guilty. And he perhaps is the one person who managed to get out of this scot-free. Like the lady I spoke about in my previous video, these two people clearly targeted a specific demographic of people. They targeted black people who were having trouble financially. Now guys, this is where I get a little bit angry because what type of person would you need to be to target that specific demographic. You know that the people that you are targeting, that, that your victims are going to be people who are going to look just like you, come from your background, only these people are not going to have it as fortunate as you do. These people are down and out and they are looking for some sort of of answer, some sort of blessing. This is what they are looking for. And when you have a couple like LaShonda and Marlon, a nationally known couple who, uh, who offer you a hand and say, hey, don't worry about it. You know us. I can give you a helping hand. It's not going to cost you that much money and I can help you to the point in which you will never need to worry again. Clearly, these people who are desperate see these people as their last hope. So they're putting their hopes and their dreams into the hands of Lashanda and Marlon. And Lashanda and Marlon knows, they just knew that this thing was going to break. It's easy for a person like me to sit around and, and judge these, these victims and say, oh, look at you, look how silly you were. I can't believe that you would have done that. But then I've got to sit back and ask myself, Am I in the same situation as these people? No, I'm not. I'm not in the, their position. These people knew what happened two years ago. They know that people were going to be in trouble because of what happened two years ago. People were losing their jobs. I don't want to say the P word, the, the, the plan word, yeah? We'll call it plan D, yeah? So two years ago, at the beginning of the plan D, when that started out, People were in trouble. And Lashonda and Marlon capitalized on this ill fortune. You need to be depraved to do something like this. What made the scheme so damaging was that the people that initially came into the pyramid, they came in and then when they saw that it was working, they invited their brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts, people they knew friends of the family, they would invite those people also into this pyramid scheme. And when this pyramid collapsed, everybody gets hit. This destroyed a lot of families in many cases. So these people were told that they could invest $1,400 and make $11,000 within a couple of weeks. Now, that is extremely tempting, but I already know that this sounds too good to be true. This brings us back to Nehemiah Thompson because all these people had to be connected to this Bint scheme through a symbiont. This symbiont was a company called Connect Me. Now, this man collected five million dollars of royalties through this scheme and he got away with it scot-free. He has collected his money and he left. For him, he was merely the agent that connected these people through to Bint. That's it. But he must have known that something bad was going on. And I wouldn't be surprised if later he has to show his face up in court to answer for what he has done. In total, they made, and you're not going to believe this, $40 million from this scheme. 
40 million dollars creamed from the african-american community and then put into the pockets of two greedy so-and-sos so they could live the lives of riley whilst knowing that the people that were struggling in the first place have now been put further into debt along with the rest of their close family members and their close friends this is disgusting now funnily enough when anybody started asking questions about the scheme you know what lashonda and marlon moore did they did the same thing that all scammers do they blocked them out of the facebook chat <laughs> it's funny it seems like they all do the same thing they would threaten people and say hey if you speak about it you could lose all your money and they wrote into their contract this is part of the reason why it managed to carry on for so long because people didn't want to talk about it because they were too afraid of losing their investment it was the perfect plan because they could get away with doing anything and no one would utter a word we are getting to the point in which we need to start blaming these victims too because the reality is is that it's out there and people know about this so many people have been scammed in this way if you don't know it means you haven't done your due diligence and due diligence is extremely important when it comes to any business deal i mean just take a look at their scheme it looks a lot like this doesn't it well this is the pyramid scheme that i was talking about last year they look so similar because they are the exact same thing they even work in the exact same way so if you are at the point where you are saying to yourself oh, well this is something different if you're looking to blame somebody for putting you in this situation perhaps you should take a look in the mirror the problem is is that some of these participants actually get the payout that they asked for so they are making that money and they are saying well okay well this works so you have people out there who are running around saying hey this absolutely does work it worked for me i made my eleven thousand dollars and all i did was invested fourteen hundred dollars that's the problem you have 10 20 30 people out of many thousands of people who it does work for and these people are running around doing their best to promote this idea to promote the scheme and most of the times they're not lying problem about pyramid schemes is that at some point within the scheme nobody else joins the scheme and this is when things start to go wrong and eventually that pyramid will collapse and where does that money go well take a guess there is a reason why these pyramid schemes are illegal and that's because of the vast majority of the times they do not work so companies can't promote these types of schemes because they cannot promise the outcomes that their victims are looking for in the video last year i spoke a little bit about how we did it in the Jamaican community and how my mother managed to buy uh, two properties before she even landed in the UK. Things work that way because of the cohesion within their society, within their community. The African American community does not have that fusion. It has a few people who will do anything, and I mean anything, they will f you off. For a goddamn percentage this is the same in jamaica too as well it's just the sign of the times we cannot trust the people around us today but 30 40 50 years ago yeah things were different at 40 million dollars each entry 1400 dollars we're talking about over 20 000 people that they managed to f over in conclusion these people knew what they were doing 20,000 black Americans thought that they had the answer to their prayers and really they had only met the devil in disguise disguised as a, a beautiful African American woman and a well-dressed handsome African American man in a beautiful family who were more focused on their family and willing to put their family into position of strength and power at the expense of their community so did any of you guys manage to invest in the bint scam did any of you guys lose any money these guys are going to trial right now and 
it's going to be really amazing to see how things pan out. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to get off or do you think they're going to have to pay these people their money back? Please let me know in the comment section below. It'd be really good to hear your opinion on this. So guys, that's all I've got time for for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my Patreons and I'll see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice. Tara bit. Thank you.